and yesterday I was running around doing a lot of things and it was like my voice was like this, this couldn't be able to talk, you know. And um, I felt, well, do I need to like express, you know, something here and um, uh, I think it was also sit to, to be able to sit still to allow the communication to come in as well as expressing mm -hmm. this was a lot of it because I was I was running around and I just had like well I mean, I've just sort of been in this mindset I've got to do so much stuff before I go <laughs> but I'm like oh. it's all okay yeah. it's really nothing to, Nothing that can't be done. Like that Beatles song. What are we trying to do? Just, just Aaron. It's like um, to go to the doctor and just practical things. But it's more of the energy of like feeling. I don't know. Just letting my mind, you know, be scrambled or something. But I think it's like. And then everything feels really intense. Like I'm walking down the street and I'm like, so intense. You know, like everything just feels. Everything just feels really intense in this whole. How <clears throat> the separation anxiety comes up, you know? And it's like, oh my God. I'm leaving, you know, and I, I love I love this place though. I was like, but I'm not going anywhere. Also, so um, a lot of that's been coming up a little bit that I noticed, and I just was like, I just had to come out here. I was like doing things, and then I met with Hilton, and we had a quick bite to eat, and I was like, well, I'm just gonna you know go and do something. I had stuff before, I, and I was like, I'm just going. Like, I'm not thinking of just coming out. <laughs> you know, this is where I want to be. And so, I'm glad it came up. Yeah. Excuse me, can you talk about the separation in Kali? Like, oh, yeah. Let's, we'll go into that. I'll, I'll signal at the beginning of our yeah. <laughs> our and we're gone. Yeah. <laughs> first change that was ever experienced was what some people have called the fall from grace, from the state of nirvana or heaven or perfection, uh, from eternity into time. That's the first seeming change, from the everlasting to time increments, which we were just talking about, errands to run and things to do and lots of the past of the future. And so the mind that believes that it is separated from God or Source now believes that it's dreaming a dream that's people full of all kinds of figures that seem like they're other people, but they're really just reflections of our mind. So they just witness to all of our thoughts and concepts and emotions. So we're really, we think we're seeing something that's apart from us, but it's actually just a representation of us. So now the waking up back to that eternal reality involves change. And these increments of change, we could call miracles or openings and shifts in mind. And every time the mind shifts towards this wholeness, towards this eternity, towards the present moment, there is there's an anxiety, there's a deep-seated kind of fear there because the first change that was experienced was traumatic. So now even in the return to that state, each step of letting go of the familiar, letting go of what seemed to be comfortable and convenient and so on and so forth, has an anxiety with it because each step is, is a step back towards that eternal moment towards the just living in the present moment. So it can be with a city or a location or uh, you didn't experience too much with Carmine, I guess. You, did you have any separation anxiety with your with your boyfriend? When he left? Yeah. 
Yeah, <laughs> that's why I got sick. I was telling Kathy, I, first I got cold, then the cold was over, then I got, then it was the throat, then it was like, then it was the stomach. It seemed like things were flowing out of my eyes, my nose, my ears, my mouth. It was like everything was coming up. It was, it was I'd never experienced anything like that. So something was definitely happening, and I wasn't aware that it was going to, but it did happen. And there was like that little bit of anxiety in there that the ego decided to just parade for me to see it right in front of me so I could see it and see how meaningless it was. Like I didn't enjoy being sick at all. <laughs> so why I get sick, you know, it's like why I get upset. And, you know, I, I decided to come clean with him. I said, I'm going to come clean. I feel bad that you're leaving this whole thing. And that's when he called me down and called me. He said, we got back, you know, it's done. And he was actually able to just express it beautifully, like it's done. And, you know, let's just be friends together and, you know, be there for each other. It's fine. You know? So it's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems to be too, it's very much tied into time and the past because there's a familiarity. And when you think of all, like if you think of all the joyful memories that you've had, around New York since you've lived here. This has been like your hometown. Mm -hmm. The same thing happened to me, you know, back when I first started being called to go travel and to do these kind of things. I felt like a bit of a separation anxiety with Cincinnati because I had seemingly gone through the whole thing and spent my whole, much of my whole life there. And then when I would go out on some travels and come back and see the skyline for the first time as I would come around the bend from from Indiana or Northern Kentucky or whatever, and feel this, it was like sentimentality. It was a lot of sentimental feelings because it's a sense of home. And it can be not only all the memories that you've had, but family members, you know, my grandmother, my sister, my family and everything. It can be a sense of separation and anxiety of just missing, you know, just being out on the road and just missing someone or missing a place or whatever. And I noticed though that I went off in my purpose, the more I got into my purpose of just letting it pour through me, that every time I would come back, it would be like the separation anxiety would be a little less, or the, the feelings of heaviness or sadness. And I was like, oh, this is how, it's like shifting in my mind. I had to get really anchored in my purpose before that it kind of dissolved away. And I think that's the same way it goes in relationships, that we go through a series of relationships a lot of times and and there's a sadness or about parting and or like you were saying, Carmen was saying, you know, what about a year from now and I don't want to lose you and you know, it gets into a lot of stuff about the future. But as long as we feel like there's still something pulling on the inside or something, then that's still the ego getting undone and it's, it's getting washed away gently over and over and over, but it's like the ego still wants to like cling to something and associate all that joy with specific persons or places or things. I think in my life I would go back and think about these powerful holy instants I had with certain people in certain places and I would try to go revisit, almost like to recapture place again that it wouldn't be there and I would be like, hmm, it's got to be inside of me and it's just the ego is trying to tie it and associate it with a particular person or place or thing. So that's uh, basically what this awakening is, it's letting go of that hurt, that anxiety. Yeah, like now at first the emails back and forth and all things was like, I love you, I'm scared from Carmen, and now they're, you're in my heart, you're in my thoughts, it's like gotten if he just needed some time, he kind of flipped out at first, and then he relaxed. It's so nice, you know, just to see that he's relaxing now and enjoying himself a bit more, being more present, and just now he can say, yeah, you know, you're here, but, you know, maybe you're not with him, but, so, yeah, maybe it took a little time just to get there.